Hey everybody, this is Mike Fahey with Toy Time. We're in the Toy Time studio here. Episode 7 is out on Blu-ray today, The Force Has Awakened. And ever since I saw the original Star Wars back in 1977 uh, in the backseat of my dad's station wagon at the drive-in, I'm old. There's been one toy I've wanted, and that is a lightsaber. Now, for years, I've been settling for things like these. Now, I say things like these because these are the uh, Build-A-Sabers from Hasbro. These are new, but they are plastic lightsabers. They light up, they have sounds, but they're really flimsy. I see cracks in this one already. Uh, my kids have hit me with them. I just hit myself. Ow! Once the prequel started coming out, I started looking at the Force FX line of sabers, but they always seemed a bit too flimsy for the investment. I wanted something that could take a hit, uh, something I could swing and hurt, and not worry about having to spend another couple hundred dollars on a brand new unit if I broke it, or, you know, a hundred. Little did I know that there's an entire fan base dedicated to lightsaber battle, fighting in real life with elaborately built machines. None of them are real lightsabers, of course, but with the amount of dedication and care that goes into building and maintaining them, you'd think they were. One of the key names that comes up every time I've looked into this uh, little subculture, little sub fan base, is Ultra Sabers. They're one of many stores that puts them together, but Ultra Sabers has a great reputation for getting sabers out fast, having a whole bunch of different designs, and just in time for Episode 7, they released the Renegade. Let me show you the Renegade. This is the Ultra Sabers Renegade. This might hit my ceiling before I get my hand up. This is a machined aluminum, 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 for my British friends, piece of work. It is gorgeously worked. It is packed with electronics. It's sort of the thing you might see Kylo Ren carrying around. It is heavy. The hilt and the cross guard and the various emitters probably at least five pounds. I mean, this is metal. This is no one's fooling around with this. These saber blades come in a variety of strengths and lengths. There's ones that are just for show. There's ones for, you know, light theatrical combat. There's some that are for his heavy combat. They are very sturdy, though giving. When this shipped, it came with this part here in a separate box, and then the actual blades. And attaching them was just a matter of a one little screw on each area with a little Allen wrench. And they're secure in there, they're not coming out. Brr. Now normally I'd turn my lights off to show you how the light works on the Ultra Saber Renegade. I believe this is the SE. Let's see what it looks like with the lights on, my full studio lights on here. And let's see if it shows up. It shows up. It adds a glow to my face. I kind of like this. Hear the sounds? It's kind of hard to sh show you the thing move. There it is, the clash sound. It is a very bright red. It comes off a little orange down here. We have LED emitters here and here, giving off light for the crossbars. And it will, if you tap it lightly, no sound if you tap it hard. So this is a battle-ready saber. It is set up with flash on clash, so you hit it, and it flashes, mine is white. Let's turn it off. This is a very powerful weapon. When I say very powerful weapon, I mean it's a weapon that's powerfully built and powerfully designed. Very cool details on the grip. It has the, uh, you might have seen these on some other lightsabers. It's like the traditional mount for it. The saber actually comes with a belt clip that this hooks into. Now, this is too long. <laughs> this is too long to fit on my belt with the blade in it. But you can take the blades off easily and carry it around, cosplay with it. So this part can be taken off. These parts down here can be taken off. You'll probably need to take off the guards here, the blades, to make that happen. But it is customizable. Now that I've been playing, for, playing with it for a while, I'm really interested in what else they have to offer. This is a cool cross guard, you know, episode seven style blade. Uh, but they have plenty of one handed sabers. They have double bladed sabers. I can't imagine trying to wield one of those on a video. So good thing I didn't. What this saber also has in it is the V4 sound chip. I think it's called V4 sound chip. Uh, it has several different sounds programmed in. Let's see if I can activate it. Mm-hmm. Black 
star. Ancient Saber. Confirm. Confirm. These blades do come off. They're relatively cheap to replace. Uh, all things considered, I mean, this metal piece is sturdy as hell. You're not going to hurt that. You might scratch a little bit in fighting. Uh, you're not going to scratch it with one of these, though. Now, how much does a saber like this run? Well, there's the sticking point for... This is definitely an enthusiast item. This here, this configuration, is around $500. Uh, I looked it up on the website. There are more expensive options as well. There are more expensive colors. There's an em emerald driver, I believe it is, that changes the LED colors in the saber, so you can modify it if you want a pink saber. You can have a pink saber. I kind of wanted a pink saber. Thing is, I can get parts and make it a pink saber if I want to. And no one's going to stop me because I'm carrying this around, the Renegade SE. Before we go, I'm going to turn off the lights and see what it looks like in the dark. Be right back. And three, two, one. A step back. So that's the Ultra Sabers Renegade SE, available now at ultrasabers.com. This is Mike Fahey with Toy Time, and I'll see you next time with something a little less dramatic, because it really doesn't get any more dramatic than this.